Hey everybody, this is Jim from Bites and Beers, and welcome back to my playthrough of Police Quest in Pursuit of the Death Angel. A quick recap from our last episode. We returned to the police station to find Sergeant Dooley pretty peeved over a poultry problem. We then tried to throw our good friend Jack a surprise birthday party. However, uh, we weren't aware that Jack had just found out his daughter is on drugs and his wife's about to leave him and it wound up being the most depressing birthday party I've ever seen. We were then reminded that we had traded shifts with our colleague earlier in the week and we were due back at the station for a briefing in 15 minutes. We were late for our briefing, uh, but once we got back on patrol, we made up for it. We found the stolen Cadillac everyone had been looking for and wound up making a felony stop and arresting a so-called Mr. Hoffman, who's definitely wrapped up in the drug crime going on in Lytton. We're just not quite sure what his involvement is. So we start episode four back at the jail. We had just booked Mr. Hoffman for a variety of crimes and the jailer uh, just notified us that Sergeant Dooley wants to see us back at the police station ASAP. So let's head over to the station and see what Sergeant Dooley needs. Okay, let's see what's going on. Hello, Sonny. I have a memo here concerning you. Let me read it to you. Oh, is he crying? As Sergeant Dooley starts to read, his eyes begin to sting and water profusely. Sergeant Dooley races for the bathroom, cursing the gremlin for spraying the memo with mace. On his way out, Dooley yells, Read the memo yourself, Sonny, if you can. From the hallway comes uncontrolled laughter as Dooley declares, When I find who that gremlin is, I swear I'll kill him. All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the memo. You may be smart, but you can't read a memo upside down. Okay. Go around here. Hey, I like this chair. This is what it feels like to be the big boss, huh? I can get used to this. Okay, interdepartmental memo from Lieutenant James Morgan, Narcotics, regarding Officer Bonds. Officer Bonds' request for a temporary transfer to the Narcotics Department has been approved. Bonds is to report to my office ASAP in suitable street clothes. Awesome, so we got a uh, sort of a promotion, I guess. We're gonna be working with the Narcotics Detectives. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our keys back and we'll put our radio back and we'll go take a shower and get into our plain clothes and um, head over to Lieutenant Morgan's office to see what's going on. I'm not sure how it works with a temporary transfer. I assume we'd be on a special assignment and we'd be returned to patrol duty afterwards, uh, but maybe we can do a really good job here and turn this into uh, a permanent position. So let's get our towel. And let's go join Mr. Fudley in the shower. And it looks like Sonny and Morris are twin brothers, except for the hair color. We're like shower buddies. This is great. All right, that should do it. We'll get our plain clothes here. I don't think we need our case. We'll see. Oh, I guess we do. Okay, we'll take the case. Um, we'll get our gun, get our ammo. Make sure our gun is loaded and we are ready for action. Here we go, Detective Bonds. I like the I like the look of this. Okay, now 
I'm pretty sure we are going to need a radio in the field, even though we're undercover. Let's grab our radio and let's head over to Lieutenant Morgan's office. Very dapper. Hello, Sonny. Please step over here to my desk. Lieutenant Morgan welcomes you to the Narcotics Division and explains the necessity of your new image. Sonny, I've decided to put you on the Hoffman case due to your involvement in the arrest. Your partner will be Detective Laura Watts. You can join Laura in her office now. Good luck on the case and welcome aboard, Sonny. Nice. All right, here is our new office, the Narcotics Division. And here's Laura, our new partner. Welcome to the Narcotics Division, Sonny, says Laura. I'm pleased you were selected for the position. Allow me to show you around. This file cabinet contains all our active narcotics cases, including Hoffman's file. Walk this way. This keyboard contains keys to the unmarked cars that are assigned to the narcotics division. I've been meaning to update that clipboard hanging there. By the way, our radio call number is 83 Nora 10. This will be your desk, Laura continues. Since you have your own desk now, your pigeonhole will be assigned to someone else. Sonny, Laura says earnestly. I attended Hoffman's arraignment early this morning. He's being represented by some out-of-town hotshot lawyer. The jerk has convinced Judge Palmer that Hoffman is who he says he is, and that's not the worst of it. Judge Palmer set Hoffman's bail at only $500,000, Laura exclaims. We've got to show cause to justify a no-bail warrant. If Hoffman gets out on bail, we'll never see his ugly face again. Sonny, I have a meeting right now and can't stay. Hoffman's your baby now and time is running out. I hope you can discover some information that will convince Judge Palmer to hold him without bail. Okay, so right into the deep end. Um, all right, so we have to find some evidence that uh, can convince the judge to deny Hoffman's bail. So um, Laura did say that Hoffman's file was in the file cabinet. So why don't we start there? Uh, okay, who we got here? Watson, Malone, Jenkins, Justin Fletch, and Hoffman. Okay, so here is Hoffman's file. Um, name, Marvin Hoffman, alias Leroy Pearson, 5'11", 195 pounds, black brown hair, Caucasian. Identifying marks, a tattoo of a small flower above left nipple. That's right, Sweet Cheeks Marie mentioned that tattoo when she was um, mentioning her dealings with uh, Hoffman. Uh, date of birth, March 1st, 1949. Last known address is in Chicago. Bail of half a million dollars. Date of arrest, September 7th, 1983. Time of arrest, 3.45 p.m. Charges, suspicion of murder, auto theft, narcotics possession, evading arrest, concealed weapon, and reckless driving. An expired Illinois driver's license in the name of M. Hoffman, a temporary California driver's license in the name of L. Pearson. Arrest summary. Observed without front license plate. Rear plate near match with suspicious 187 VC vehicle. Suspect attempted to evade arrest. Initiated pursuit. Felony stop. Suspect in custody. Narcotics seized. Stolen vehicle recovered. And vehicle turned over to the narcotics division. Uh, in evidence, we have five pounds of marijuana, estimated street value $4,000, and a pound of cocaine, estimated value $250,000, one forty-five automatic handgun, mm, that doesn't sound right, I think they mean semi-automatic handgun, um, and one black notebook. Vehicle information, we have an 83 Cadillac DeVille, blue color, Stolen from Lytton, California, registered to Malcolm Washington. 
We have copies of the two driver's licenses that we recovered from the vehicle. And that's it. Okay, so we have information on that tattoo. I think that's gonna be relevant here. So let's take the file. You remove the Hoffman file from the drawer. And let's see what else we got here. Now, Laura mentioned this clipboard over here. I'm not quite sure what this is. So let's take a look. Okay, so this looks like a list of stolen vehicles. Um, Grand Theft Auto, we have the 1983 Cadillac Coupe de Ville stolen in Lytton. That's the one that we recovered. We also have a 1985 Yama, Yama Mama 750cc motorcycle cherry red with saddlebags stolen in Lytton. All right, nothing that helps us there. Okay, here's a burglary sheet. A Ramington rifle, 22 caliber lever action, oak stock, gold plated trigger, and some ladies silk panties, 57 pair, size 46 to 50, blue with zippered crotch, stolen from Fancy Pants Lingerie Emporium. Okay, what else we got? Hog and dog food, 2,400 pounds taken from Fat Fred's Fat and Feed Farm in Lytton. Nine largemouth belly bustin' stink baits, stolen from Chink's Cast and Catch It Bait Store. Wedding rings, eight. 24 carat with diamond stones taken from Jesse the jeweler. Be on the lookout, a dog, three feet high, 145 pounds, black and white spots, name Buffy, AKA the consumer. Oh, what do we got here? FBI most wanted list, wanted for murder on a federal warrant, Jason Teselli, alias known to use the last names Harris and Hoffman. And this gentleman does look like our Marvin Hoffman. Ah, physical description, 5'11", 195 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, tattoo of a flower above left nipple, wanted for the murder of a Columbia national suspected narcotics runner. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and take um, the clipboard with us. The clipboard must remain here in the office. Okay, can we take this list, take list? Aha, tattoo of flower above left nipple. You take the FBI wanted poster, knowing Judge Palmer will find it very interesting. Great. Um, all right, let's grab some keys and head over to the court. You take the keys to the undercover car. All right, I hope uh, we're not too late. Now we still have to do a walk around inspection because this is police duty. Can't walk all the way around the car, so we just have to do each side like this. And now we are ready to hit the streets. Let's get to court. Okay, let's get in there and see what we can do. We have to keep this guy off the streets. All right, I don't want to just barge into the courtroom, so let's go ahead and check in over here. How do you do, sir? May I help you? Yeah, I'd like to talk to the judge. I'm sorry, but Judge Kim Palmer's court is presently in session. Okay, um, this is an emergency. Please wait a moment. I'll send a message with the bailiff. The bailiff says, Judge Palmer will see you if you can make it quick. Go on into the courtroom. Excellent, thank you, sir. Judge Palmer strikes the gavel. Silence, I will consider Mr. Bonds' request. Mr. Bonds, you may approach the bench. Mr. Bonds, who or what is this warrant for, says the judge. That would be my man, Hoffman. And what information do you have to substantiate the validity of a warrant? Uh, let's show the file. All right, do you have any other information? Uh, we have that list. Judge Palmer motions the bailiff to retrieve the evidence. You hand the evidence to the bailiff. 
Your heart races as Judge Palmer evaluates your evidence. You think to yourself, this punk cannot go free. Judge Palmer scans the items presented and questions. What makes you think these two men are the same person, Mr. Bonds? Come on, Judge, do I really have to spell it out for you? It's the tattoo, baby. The bailiff and court reporters squirm and choke, trying to conceal their laughter while you quietly tell the judge your tale of tattoos and nipples. The judge attempts to stifle her giggles, but fails. Judge Palmer whispers softly to you, well, Mr. Bonds, it appears your friend has his tit caught in a ringer. Stifling her laughter, Judge Palmer says, Congratulations, Mr. Bonds. Your request is granted. Here is a no-bail warrant issued in the name of Jason Tasselli, alias Marvin Hoffman. Yes, we got it. Bailiff, deliver this to Mr. Bonds and escort him out. Here you are, Mr. Bonds. I hope you are not too late. Tasselli's attorney is at the jail at this very moment, attempting his release. All right, luckily the jail is right across the street. So let's get over there and see if we can stop this from happening. Hey, Sonny, come over here, says the jailer. I have something to tell you. The jailer seethes. I hope you know, Bonds, at this very moment, Hoffman's lawyer is in the front reception area, bailing that worm out. Oh yeah? How about this? You hand the jailer the no-bail warrant just in time to keep Mr. Tasselli from returning to the streets. Oh man, this is great, Sonny, the jailer laughs. I hope you know this will slam the old boy's orifice shut. I'll be right back. This is going to blow his attorney's mind. We did it. We did it, folks. Boy, that made my day, Sonny. You should have seen the guy. He started ranting and raving like a little kid who just had his lollipop taken away. Awesome. All right, Tuselli, enjoy your stay. We're heading back to the station. Hey, what's this? It looks like Laura is waiting for you. You wonder what's up. Sonny, one of my informants just told me a drug deal is going down soon in Lytton City Park, says Laura, getting into your car. Lieutenant Morgan wants us to stake it out and see what we can do. All right, let's roll. All right, so I guess we're heading over to the park. All right, let's see if we can maneuver our way in here. Perfect. Okay, let's talk to Laura. Laura says, okay, Sonny, I'll move the car out of sight and monitor you for backup. Perfect. All right, let's head into the park. Now we're going to want to hide behind some of these bushes and we're also going to want to have our gun at the ready because we don't know what we're going to encounter here. So I'll draw my gun. You conceal yourself in the bushes, but with a clear view of the table. Okay, and I'm going to radio to Laura that we're in position. You key your extender and notify Detective Watts that you're in a concealed position. She responds to your transmission. 10-4 will maintain radio silence until I hear from you. And now we wait. All right, here we go. You quietly watch a man enter the picnic area. He cautiously nears the picnic table. Yeah, he's looking around for somebody.
Another figure carefully approaches the picnic table. Could it be his drug contact? Psst, Vic, were you followed? No way, man, it's cool. I got the stuff, did you bring the cash? Yeah, right here. Oh, one suspect hands what appears to be an envelope to the other suspect. The second suspect returns a small plastic bag containing a white substance. All right, we have an exchange. A hey, butt breath, this ain't enough, where's the rest? As they argue, you realize the pusher is dissatisfied with the contents of the envelope. All right, we gotta make our move. I'm gonna radio Laura. You quietly radio Laura. I'm moving in. You hook up anybody trying to take foot bail. And let's uh, tell them to freeze. Halt, you shout, police officer. Jiggers, the fuzz, shouts the pusher. I'm out of here. Don't shoot, officer, shouts the young man. I give up. All right. Let's cuff this guy. You cuff one trembling suspect. All right, let's read him his rights. Carefully, you admonish your suspect of his Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. What you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning if you wish. Uh, search this guy. The search reveals nothing except his school identification card and the small bag containing a white powdery substance that you watched him get from the pusher. Alright, um, follow me, dude. You follow Sims to the patrol car. Laura asks, what took you so long, Hot Rod? I picked up this loose end trying to take foot bail on you. You mumble under your breath, yeah, sure, Laura, you probably just grabbed the first white male you could find. Ooh. Let's go ahead. I want to search again because I want Laura to search her suspect. So we'll search this guy. You search the trembling youngster. You find nothing more. Laura searches her suspect. She finds his gun, an envelope of money, and little else. Uh, so let's question the man. Sims is reluctant but cooperative. You learn he has been selling to kids at Jefferson High School, including, oh shit, Officer Cobb's daughter, Kathy. Wow. Um, let's question Sims again. I used to buy from a guy named Jose Martinez, but then Martinez introduced me to Don Colby here, Sims says. I haven't seen Martinez since. That's right, Martinez was one of the other drug dealers uh, that turned up dead recently. All right, let's, um, let's question Colby here. Colby refuses to answer any questions. All right, let's try one more time. Ah! After persistent questioning of Colby, you discover he buys his drugs from Leroy Pearson. He says Leroy's telephone number is 555-6537. He also asks that his cooperation be noted for consideration by the court. Pearson's the other name that uh, Hoffman is going by, right? One of his aliases, I believe. Laura comments, Lieutenant Morgan will be real happy with this bust. All right, let's try and use our radio real quick. You key your radio dispatch. This is 83 Nora 10. Be advised code four with two in custody. Okay, let's head over to the jail and we'll drop these fellas off. Laura says, get the door, Sonny. I'll keep an eye on these boys. Yes, ma'am.
Get inside, boys. Slam Dunk Donnie yells through the fence. Hey, baby, you boys play basketball? Sunny says, Laura, I'll wait here while you complete the booking. The jailer greets you with a friendly, oh no, here comes more paperwork. The jailer says, this is certainly a fine looking group you got this time, Sonny. We'll book the men. What are you charging these dudes with? Asked the jailer. That's going to be drugs. Okay, drugs it'll be, the jailer says. Fill out a booking slip and give me his property. You remove inventory and deliver the prisoner's personal property to the jailer along with the booking slip. The jailer says, okay, Sonny, remove their cuffs and put the little pushers into cell number one. You remove the cuffs and place them in your handcuff case. I'm going to sue you for making them cuff so tight, Flatfoot threatens your prisoner. I think you boys know where to go, you tell them. Oh, they're going in the same cell. Uh, that's going to be a cozy time. Up yours, Dick Tracy. You'll never make this stick. Hey, Bonds, yells Laura. I'll wait for you in the car. Okay, and that's going to be the end for episode four. And I will be back soon with episode five. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to get notified when I release new videos, please hit the subscribe button. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.